Hello, I'm Mike, and in this video you join me on a very strange Vancouver day because I'm seeing blue skies here and there, and yet it's starting to snow down here. Anyway, you also join me with the Jeep Gladiator Mojave Edition. What's different about this one? Well, it's got bigger tires, Fox suspension, and it says Mojave on the side. Okay, there's a bit more to it than that. So let's get out of this crazy weather and let's go for a drive. Under the hood of the Jeep Gladiator Mojave is a 3.6 liter V6 that's naturally aspirated and it produces 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Unfortunately, the Gladiator Mojave does not have the diesel engine as an option. Hopefully, in the future, it will have it, but for now, it doesn't. This V6 is paired with either a six-speed manual or an eight-speed automatic, like how I have here. But back to this V6 engine, it's not as much power as you get in the Colorado ZR2. That one has 306 horsepower. But for this Jeep Gladiator, it's okay. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour takes around eight and a half seconds. And during my time with the Jeep, it didn't feel like as though it ever struggled to get up to speed or accelerate onto a highway. Fuel economy with this V6 engine is not the greatest. It is rated for 10.4 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway and 14.3 liters per 100 kilometers in a city. Granted, the Colorado ZR2 has worse fuel economy numbers, so in a way, this is a bit more economical, but still, right now I am averaging around 15 liters per hundred kilometers. So yeah, it can get quite expensive at the pumps. As I said earlier in the video, the Gladiator Mojave is available with a six-speed manual, or for $1,795 Canadian, you can get an eight-speed automatic like this demo vehicle. This automatic is reasonably quick to change gears and the shifts are buttery smooth. Actually, most of the time, I hardly notice the transmission upshift, it's that smooth. But it does have a tendency to hold a gear if you go up an incline on a road. And when I say hold a gear, I mean up to 4000 or 5000 RPMs. One thing you should be aware of is that with the manual transmission, towing for the Gladiator Mojave is around 4500 pounds. But get it with this 8 speed auto and that number jumps to 6000 pounds. When going around corners with the Gladiator Mojave, it's a little bit different. There isn't quite as much body roll as I was expecting with a one inch lift to the suspension, but there's not really that much connection between the steering wheel and the front tires, as in I don't really feel what they're doing. Also, just driving on a straight line, especially on a highway, I constantly have to do minute corrections or give the steering minute corrections just to stay in a straight line. That can get pretty tiring on longer journeys. Off the beaten path though, the Jeep Gladiator Mojave is a joy to drive. It comes equipped with a one inch lift over the Rubicon trim and has Fox shocks with an external reservoir on each corner. The benefit there is better heat management and consistent damping. These shocks do a great job of absorbing bumps at higher speeds and keeping the wheels planted to the ground. But this being a Baja inspired truck, jumping is not out of the question. To ensure that the Gladiator can take the landing, the frame has been reinforced and, on the front at least, it uses hydraulic jounce bumpers for a smoother and softer cushion. The rear axle has regular rubber jounce stops. 
Should you need to take a slow around an obstacle, the Gladiator Mojave has slightly better approach, departure, and breakover angles than the Rubicon thanks mainly to its increased ride height. It also has taller four low gears than its Rubicon cousin. In the Rubicon they are 4 to 1, whereas in the Mojave they are 2.7 to 1 low gear ratios. The rear differential can also lock in 4 high mode, whereas in the Rubicon it can only be locked in the 4 low mode. Granted, the Rubicon also has a locking front differential and disconnecting anti-roll bars. The Mojave doesn't. But what the Mojave does have is an off-road plus drive mode, which adjusts the engine's throttle response and reins in the ABS, traction control, and stability control programs for a more tail-out action when driving quickly in a desert, or in my case here in Vancouver, snow. In terms of ride comfort, the Jeep Gladiator Mojave is actually not too bad on city streets. The bumps are absorbed quite easily and it doesn't feel overly jarry over rougher roads. Obviously with this suspension setup, it was meant to be a high speed off-road vehicle, whereas the Rubicon is more of a low speed rock crawler. And off-road, yeah, it's okay. It's still rough, obviously, but it feels bearable. But the biggest detriment to comfort when driving in the Jeep Gladiator Mojave is, as you can probably hear, all the noise from wind and the tires. Right now it is quite a bit more windy than it normally is, so I can hear quite a lot of wind from around this area. And of course I can hear those 33 inch tires the faster I go. At 6 foot 4, I have an adequate amount of space in the front seat. Headroom is good and more can be had if you remove the roof. However, I could use a bit more legroom. My knees weren't touching the dashboard per se, but they were at an almost 90 degree angle when sitting in the driver's seat. Behind my driving position, I could fit, but again, more legroom would have been nice. There's an indentation in the back of the driver's seat so tall adults like myself won't feel squished. Headroom is good, but just be aware of the roof-mounted speakers and crossbars. Overall though, the Jeep Gladiator Mojave has more legroom in the back seats than the Colorado ZR2 for example. Lift up the rear seats and you find a bit of storage for small items. Pull down the rear seat backs and again, more small item storage can be found behind the seats. Jeep's engineers utilize the interior space very well. The Gladiator Mojave comes equipped with a standard 7-inch Uconnect infotainment system, but it can be upgraded to an 8.4-inch screen with navigation. Like many other Stellantis, formerly FCA, vehicles, the infotainment system is very straightforward and easy to learn. The Mojave trim incorporates off-road pages to the infotainment screen that shows you important vehicle information such as roll, pitch, engine parameters, steering angles, and front and rear cameras. The front camera also has its own washer nozzle should it get dirty while you play in the mud. The interior of the Gladiator is a blend of classic Jeep and modern design trends. The window switches, for example, are on the center of the dashboard. The transfer case shift lever is an actual lever, whereas in many other trucks, it's all electronically operated. However, the leather on the seats is soft and there's orange contrast stitching along with Mojave written on the seats. There's also orange highlights around the air vents. My favorite aspect of the interior though are the easter eggs sprinkled throughout. For example, when turning on the Gladiator, the instrument cluster screen displays a classic Jeep that then fades to a modern one. The floor mat on the passenger side has a T-Rex skull on it. That's a nod to Jurassic Park. There's a little Willy's Jeep icon on the passenger side of the windshield. And when the off-road pages load, a little Jeep Gladiator icon crosses from left to right. The Jeep Gladiator Mojave starts at $52,740 Canadian, which is already over $4,000 Canadian more than the starting price of the Colorado ZR2, but it is $4,000 Canadian less than the starting price of the Tacoma TRD Pro. 
Of course, spec went up like this demo and the price will balloon to $74,000 Canadian. So obviously it started snowing a lot more in this area, but that's okay because this Jeep Gladiator Mojave can handle it. And it can also handle quite a lot of other high speed off-road situations. That's what it was designed for. But if you prefer more low speed situations like rock crawling, for example, then the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon might be your better bet. However, overall, I actually like the Gladiator Mojave. It has character and charm and obviously looks very different compared to other mid-sized pickup trucks like the Chevy Colorado or Toyota Tacoma. But obviously I'm not a fan of how much more expensive this is compared to something like the Colorado ZR2, for example. But I guess you can say small price to pay for arguably a little bit more capability. What do you think? Do you like the Gladiator Mojave or do you prefer something like the Colorado ZR2 or the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro or maybe the Ford Ranger whenever the Tremor comes out? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want to know more about this Jeep Gladiator Mojave, I wrote a comprehensive and detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or maybe a Jeep SUV. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.